Today, I will show you five effects that I use most often in my color grades. First, what you're gonna do is convert your node to 709. Once you've done that, I'll add five nodes to show you each of the effects. Now, all of these are completely free in the free version of Resolve. So the first one is Gaussian Blur. Now, this is a pretty basic one, but it's pretty cool because it's different from the blur that you get here because you can actually, if you turn that off, you can edit these separately to create different looks. Like now it's directional and vertical, and you can do the same thing with horizontal. And even if you wanted it like this, you can also choose different border types like reflect, wrap around. You can have it just black so it creates these borders and replicate, which is kind of extending it. The reason why you might want to use this over the blur tab is because you just have more control with it rather than just blurring it with this. Now the second one that I use often, not very often, but I do like to play around with it is watercolor. Now this one's just really fun. You can make your images look like paintings and you can even pair this up with Gaussian to create like a really cool effect. When you change the smoothness, it just kind of changes the size of your brush. So here you can see in the background, it's like the size is bigger than here where you can see this has more detail. So things that are sharper usually have more detail and things that are kind of blurred have less detail. And usually I like to bring this down to like 0.001 or 0.002 because it looks really nice. But you can see sometimes it gets too detailed up here and less detailed in the back. So you kind of have to edit it to where everything is kind of in focus and you can just play around with it. But I'll just show you the main colors so you can even show the gradient of where everything is being affected. So you can see 0.004 looks pretty good. You can change this to RGB and it'll actually take into account the colors of the image to create a better mask. And you can see here, this looks very painterly. This is really just for fun. I love using it to kind of try and get like a Studio Ghibli look, try to make it look more painterly and just kind of see where the colors would look like if it was a painting. And it's just a really fun one to play around with. Now the next one. The next one I want to show you is the color palette. The color palette isn't really one that you use in your final grade, but it's something you use to like look at your colors. So I'll drag that, drop it on here. I'll name that pal. But you can see here, it shows you the the highlight colors, the midtone colors, and the shadow colors, and then it shows you like the overall palette of your image. And you can see with this, this is really green because I'm in a forest, and you can use this to create looks. Like let's say uh, I want it a little more orange and teal, so you can use this to get those orange colors in the highlights teal colors in the shadows and you can use this just to create looks and of course you would have to balance this but you can see orange teal and then like in the middle it'd, it'd be more greenish tones or you could do more magenta tones and you can use this to create looks or to even look at other looks that people have made and recreate them like that and if you want to see how i use this more in depth you can go to my Mario video where I use it a lot to break down the colors and I'll leave a link for that or I'll like throw it up on screen now. But anyway, the next effect I'm going to talk about is the glow node. Now this one, very popular. I believe I le first learned this from Mukaz Kazi. So I definitely recommend his channel because he does a lot of color grading and he's amazing at it. But what he does is he goes to soft light he brings the sh threshold down, then he puts this gain in like the middle somewhere, and then he brings this up. And what this does is it kind of creates a soft look. It kind of looks like it gives it a little bit of haze, kind of like a diffusion filter would, but a little bit different than that because it's also contrast. So it's kind of like a mix of two th different things. I like to use it like this too, where like the spread is all the way down because it kind of gives it like that sharp edgy transformers look, but you can also bring it up to create like a soft, subtle look and create it to make it look more film-like. Like if you look at some film photos, it kind of looks like that where it's like soft and it kind of bleeds in and it bleeds all, all over the image together. Anyway. I'll name this glow, turn that off, and I'll move on to the last one. The last one, I just recently found this, but it is called the radial blur, and it is amazing because for me at least, when I like dreamy images, 
I like kind of swirly bokeh. And if your lenses don't have that in camera, uh, this is like a great way to get it out of camera. I mean, it doesn't look as good as if you did it in camera, but it still gives it a great look. I would put that 0.3 to give it more subtlety and that's realistic. You can make it stylized, but the realistic looks as you would expect more realistic, but 0.35 and you can see it just creates this nice bokeh that you wouldn't get if you were trying to just blur the sides of the images. This is a really good way to make swirly bokeh. Again, like the Gaussian, you get replicate, you get flecked, you get warp around, which kind of lightens these because they're different. Anyway, those are the five effects that I use. Have fun.